Just like you said on the radio, Mr. Doe. Well, sir, about a dozen families got together and gave Gribble a job watering their lawns. Isn't that wonderful? And then we found jobs for six other people, and they've all gone off for relief. Yeah, and my boss, Mr. Schwabacher, made a job in his warehouse for old man Delaney. And he gave you that $5 raise. Yeah, wasn't that swell? <laughs> Why, Bert, I, I feel slighted. I'd like to join, but nobody asked me. Uh, I'm sorry, Mayor, but we voted that no politician could join. Just the John Doe's of the neighborhood, because... You know how politicians are. <laughs> well, uh, the reason we wanted to tell you this, Mr. Doe, was to just to give you an idea of what you started. And from where I'm sitting, I, I don't see any sense in you jumping off any building. <laughs> no, no. Well, thank you for listening. Goodbye, Mr. Doe. You're a wonderful man. And it strikes me you can be mighty useful walking around for a while. Uh, hey, goodbye, Mr. Dole. Bye, Mr. Dole. I'm Mrs. Delaney, Mr. Doe. And God bless you, my boy. Gee whiz, I'm all mixed up. I don't get it. Look, all those swell people think I'm going to jump off a building or something. I never had any such idea. Gosh. The fellow would have to be a mighty fine example himself to go around telling other people how to... Say, look, what happened the other night was on account of Miss Mitchell here. She wrote the stuff. Don't you see what a wonderful thing this can be? But we need you, John. You're hooked. I can see that right now. They got you. Well, I'm through. For three years, I've been trying to get you up to the Columbia River country. First, it was your glass arm. Then it was the radio. And now it's the John Doe clubs. Well, I ain't waiting another minute. <laughs> Gangway, you helots. Oh. Hey, Colonel, wait a minute. Oh, please, Mr. Doe. Oh, hey, Colonel! I want you personally to go along with John Doe and Miss Mitchell and handle the press and the radio. Me? Yes, I don't want to take any chances. And Johnson? Yes, Stevie? Your crew will do the mop-up job. They'll follow John Doe into every town, see that the clubs are properly organized and the chart is issued. Right. There are only eight flags up there now. I want to see that map covered before we get through. <laughs> We'll find out what John Doe wants. 30 every Thursday, 60 at 60. Who knows what? I'm sorry, boss. They just won't let anybody talk politics to them. It's crazy. We've got to get to them. They represent millions of voters. I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, this thing has been nothing short of a prairie fire. 
We've received so many applications for charters to the John Doe clubs, we haven't been able to take care of them. I hate to have that many pins stuck in me. <laughs> this John Doe convention is a natural. It's going to put our city on the map. Why, over 2,400 John Doe clubs are sending delegates. Can you imagine that? You, Mr. Mayor, will be the official host. You will make the arrangements for decorating the city parades and a reception for John Doe when he gets home. And don't wear your high hat. No high hat? No high hat. And from you, Canel, I want a special John Doe edition every day until the convention is over. And now, if you will, please uh, step into the outer office and look your prettiest because there are photographers there to take pictures of this committee. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, Libby. Everything will be taken care of. Sure. Isn't it all too wonderful? Gather down here in a nice group now. Get a nice group Oh, Mr. Mayor, would you step down in front row, please? You ladies get close to that. Well, I don't get it. Get what? Look, D.B., I'm supposed to know my way around. This John Doe movement has cost you a fortune. Now, this convention is going to cost plenty. Well? Well, I'm stuck with two and two, and I'm a sucker if I can make four out of it. Where do you come in? Mm, I'll have the satisfaction of knowing that my money has been spent for a worthy cause. I see. I better stick to running the paper, huh? I think maybe you better had. And Canal, I'd like to have the John Doe contract, all the receipts for the money we advanced him with the letter Miss Mitchell wrote. Which I gave her a thousand dollars. Yes, sure. Well, we leave for the airport half an hour. Is that Johnny Boy's room? Better hustle him up. He'll be ready at time. He's packing. Oh, ah, good. Did you see his picture on the cover of Time? Yeah. I gotta give you credit, Annie Girl. I've handled a good many big promotions in my time. Everything from a World's Fair to a Channel Swimmer. But this one has certainly got me spinning. And now a John Doe convention. Wow. Say, if you could only get him to jump off the city hall roof on Christmas Eve, I'd guarantee you half a million people there. Charlie. Hmm? What do you make of him? Oh, Johnny boy? Well, I don't know what angle you want, but I'll give it to you quick. Number one, he's got great yokel appeal, but he's a nice guy. Number two, he's beginning to believe he really wrote that original suicide letter that you made up. Number three, he thinks that you're Joan of Arc or something. Yeah, I know. Number four, well, you know what number four is. He's nuts about you. Yeah, it's running out of his ears. You left out number five. We're all heels, me especially. Holy smoke. Come in. Small pack. Good, I'll go and get Beanie Boy. Okay, Charlie Boy. Your pack? No, thank you. <laughs> Do you care if I sit down out here? No. <laughs> you know, I had a crazy dream last night. About you. About me? Yeah, <laughs> sure was crazy. I dreamt I was your father. <laughs> there was, there was something I was trying to stop you from doing. So, uh, so I got up out of bed and I walked right through the wall here, right straight into your room. <laughs> you know how dreams are. And, and, and there you were in bed. But you, you're a little girl, you know, about 10. And very pretty, too. So I, I shook you. And the moment you opened your eyes, you hopped out of bed and started running like the devil in your nightgown. You ran right out the window there, and you ran out over the tops of buildings and roofs and everything for miles. And I was chasing you. <laughs> and, and all the time you were running, you kept growing bigger and bigger and bigger. And pretty soon, you were as big as you are now, you know, grown up. And all the time, I kept, I kept asking myself, what am I chasing her for? And I didn't know. <laughs> Isn't that a hot one? Well, anyway, you ran into some place, and then I ran in after you, and, and when I got there, there you were, getting married. And the nightgown had changed into a, 
Beautiful wedding gown. <laughs> you sure look pretty, too. <laughs> and then I knew what it was I was trying to stop you from doing. Dreams are sure crazy, aren't they? Well, would you like to know who it was you were marrying? Oh, a tall, handsome Hugh Bangy, I suppose. <laughs> 